Believing that an informed electorate is an essential element of a free society, the Pasadena Channel and tonight's sponsors are proud to bring to you an opportunity to meet judges and judicial candidates and in three types of specific courts. Those will be the family courts, the county criminal courts, and the county or the criminal district courts. The judges and the candidates will be given an opportunity to introduce themselves and then will be invited to respond to questions that are both topical and illustrative of their ability to hold the office that they seek. We hope that you will find tonight's activities informative and helpful in the exercise of your vote. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Jan Wheeler of Project Joy and Hope, who will be the chair of tonight's proceedings. Thank you. Good evening. We're so happy to bring this information, to bring these candidates to the citizens of Pasadena. I'd like to thank the panel today who's generously given of their time to score the candidates. And I'd like to introduce first uh, Reverend Jim Hastings with Sagemont Church. Uh, he is the director of Helping Hands at Sagemont. And before we introduce the entire panel, could we stand for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to come and hear these candidates, and we ask that you give them clarity of speech and mind and heart to show what is truly deep within them and what they want the public to know about their thoughts for the job. Lord, we place this in your hands, in your name. Amen. 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 Can be seated. Thank you so much. I'd like to introduce, in addition to Jim, Christina Womack, who is the uh, president of the Pasadena Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and also to my right, we have uh, Jack Rodriguez, who is the business owner of Solve Track. Thank you. And we have uh, Bruce Jeffries, who is president of National Screening. Dan Stell is to my left. He is a financial advisor with Edward Jones. Aaron Bell, who is the fire marshal for the city of Pas an assistant fire marshal for the city of Pasadena. Uh, Larry Ball who is uh, the owner of Laser Energy Company. We also have uh, Dr. Rob Francis with us this evening. Rob is the clinical assistant professor at UTMB Family Medicine. And uh, last but not least, Bill Marceau, who is a retired teacher. Thank you, Bill, for being here and all the members of the panel. Project Join Hope is happy to sponsor this segment for the Family District Court. First of all, this evening, uh, before we go on, I'd like to introduce Kevin Melton. Kevin has a, a very important job today. He's to my right. He is the owner of Senior Plans, a Medicare plan consultant. And tonight, his uh, task is to keep the time for this event. The candidates will have one minute to answer each of four questions that have been given to them prior to this event. And Kevin has the task of making sure that we stay on time. So thank you, Mr. Melton. And first, I would like to introduce uh, at the for running for the um, not uh, running for the 246 District Family Court and now serving in that position, Judge Charlie Prine. Good afternoon, Judge. First of all, would you please state your name and why you feel you are a good candidate for the court? My name is Charlie Prine, and I'm running for the 246 District Court. Currently, I'm an associate judge. That's an appointed position in Harris County. I work for one of the elected judges. The 246 District Court is an open bench. The, the current judge, he's retiring. I had 18 years of experience as an attorney running my own practice before I was appointed to the bench. I've now been on the bench for a little, well, just about four years. I do basically what an elected judge does. Um, it's, it's a pretty tough job every day to get in there and, and to hear the problems that families have, but it's, you know, families are first, and that's, that's my job, that's my duty as I get in there and I, I work with the families to help them reach some kind of positive solution to the problems that they're facing. And in that capacity, I also have, am a member of uh, the National Council of Juvenile and, uh, Juvenile and Family Law Courts, and I've been appointed by the Supreme Court to a task force in Harris County that works with the CPS. Uh, I'm also a life member of the uh, Family Law Council in Texas. Thank you so much. 
Uh, question number two, domestic violence is currently very much in the news. If elected, how would you handle such cases in your court, and what tools do you have available to protect the injured party? We have a specialized court for, for severe uh, cases of, of domestic violence. In the family law courts, we handle issues that it truly involved uh, restraining orders. In that capacity, uh, we issue orders to keep parties apart so that they're safe, that the kids are safe, that the property is safe. Uh, and I think that's recognized by the members of the Pasadena Bar and the job that I've done because they endorsed me as, as to be judge in, in the 246th. Uh, it's an important job to, to make sure that people are safe. And if, if they're not, then we can refer them to the, to the specialty court. And I think you'll hear from the candidates of, in that court a little bit later. But restraining orders are very, very important. They let everybody know what they're supposed to do, what they can do, how, they, how they're to act towards each person, how they're supposed to treat their children, and uh, how everybody's supposed to be safe. Thank you, Judge. Could you please state a procedure or policy that you have or a plan to introduce into your court, if elected, that you feel has or will result in greater effectiveness and or efficiency in your court? Yes. Uh, when people come to family court, they need relief and they need it as quickly as possible. Uh, cases shouldn't linger on the docket for any amount of time, if at all possible. What I plan to do in the 246 District Court is I, in, I intend to institute a, uh, a trial docketing system where on Fridays I intend to have all the attorneys come with their clients and we're going to sit down and we're going to look at if they're ready for trial or not. And I'm going to push that docket because I'm not going to let the attorneys sit there and find excuses not to bring their cases to court. People need help. Children need help. And that's why we're there. I need, everybody needs to have an opportunity to get in front of the judge tell what the problem is, put their evidence on, and get a resolution. And that's what I plan to do in the 246th District Court. I've seen it done in other courts, and I plan to institute it in this court, and I think it'll be very effective. And a last question for you is, what procedure, rule, or regulation do you have to determine the appointment of an attorney to represent children in litigation? There's different, uh, there's different criteria under state law. One, you have to be, uh, uh, you have to take certain classes to be appointed as an ad litem. You also have to take certain classes to be appointed as a, a CPS attorney. I will require all the attorneys that are appointed in my court to have those certifications and to, and to show the, demonstrate the experience that's necessary, especially in the CPS cases. Th those are very serious cases. That's, that's like the death penalty case for a parent to tell them that you're going to take the, their children away from them. To put an inexperienced attorney in there is just not right. They need to be certified. They need to have the experience that's necessary. And I'm going to look at, at the list of attorneys in Harris County, and I'm going to keep a list. I'm going to ask that they give me a resume, show me their certification. And from that group, I will be looking to, to make the appointments to those positions. Thank you so much, Judge Prine, for coming today. Uh, your opponent, candidate Sandra Peek, is not here with us. So we're going to move on to the 247th Family Court, where we would like now to recognize candidate John Schmoody. John? Thank you. Good afternoon. Please state your name and why you feel you are a good candidate for this court. Thank you, Ms. Wheeler, and good evening. Uh, my name is John Schmoody, and I am the Republican nominee for judge of the 247th Family District Court of Harris County. Uh, I feel I'm uniquely qualified for this bench. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I am a family law attorney that's litigated extensively. I've handled just about every area of family law, uh, having handled hundreds of cases in Harris and surrounding counties. Uh, in addition to my litigation experience, I also have an extensive business and financial background. Uh, before beginning my law practice, I served as vice president of a national bank and credit union consultant firm where it was my job to work with institutions, many of which were in a state of crisis, to help to turn them around so that they could become effective and efficient organizations. Uh, this business and financial background is very relevant to what a family court judge does, especially since we deal with so many complex financial matters. I also have a teaching background. I taught 11th and 12th grade history and science. I also spent a year in rural South Dakota working with Native American families from the Lakota Sioux tribe. So that record of service will serve me well. 
Domestic violence is currently very much in the news. If elected, how would you handle such cases in your court, and what tools do you have available to protect the injured party? I actually began my law practice in taking uh, domestic violence cases, filing applications for protective orders in the 280th District Court, which is our designated family violence court in Harris County. So I know a thing or two about uh, family violence cases and how to address it. Um, certainly, uh, uh, Harris County is a little bit unique, and Judge Prine mentioned this, uh, in that uh, we have a designated uh, family violence court. I believe we're one of the few counties in the state of Texas that has a designated family violence court. Uh, but there are a number of things um, that our family district court judges can do and should do in order to protect victims of domestic violence. Um, one of the most important areas I think we need to focus on is exchange of possession when children are involved. I think it's important extremely important that we protect, protect the safety and welfare of victims of domestic violence uh, in exchanges. And we have things like the Safe Exchange Program, and I certainly will utilize all of those tools to protect victims of domestic violence. Thank you, sir. Now, would you please state a policy or procedure that you plan to introduce into your court, if elected, that you feel has or will result in greater effectiveness and efficiency in your court? Absolutely. One of the things that uh, I want to implement uh, is a uh, requirement to mediate before temporary orders. Uh, I think if we can empower parents uh, and parties to resolve more of their disputes for themselves rather than having courts micromanage their lives uh, for those disputes that they can resolve for themselves, I think it's not only going to result in more efficient courts, uh, but it's actually better for families uh, and better for children in the end. Uh, I also want to have an express docket that begins every morning at 8 o'clock. And that express docket is going to hear cases in involving uncontested matters, uh, default matters, uh, and uh, matters of shorter duration, five minutes or less. So we're going to move some of those uh, matters that are heard right now on the main docket, move them onto the express docket. That's going to relieve the burden of the main docket, and, and that's going to relieve the burden of attorneys so that they're not sitting in court waiting around for two or three hours uh, to have uh, a, a matter that can be handled in a couple of minutes. Thank you. What procedure, rule, or regulation will you have to determine the appointment of an attorney to represent children in litigation? I think uh, the, the most important thing for us uh, to consider uh, when making the decision of who to appoint on CPS cases uh, or other cases uh, that involve a, a, a custody matter where we need an ad litem or an amicus attorney, um, these decisions need to be made based on first and foremost merit and experience of the attorney and the best interest of the child. Um, you can't have a system that is just uh, rotated in a rigorous and stoic manner because there are certain attorneys that are better fits for certain types of cases. Um, however, I will monitor the number of appointments that I make. I will keep track of the attorneys that I appoint so that I can make sure that I don't overuse one attorney in particular. But really the guiding principle is to make sure that appointments are made based solely upon merit and the best interest of children. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we would like to move to the 308th Family District Court and recognize Judge James Lombardino. Uh, Judge Lombardino, please state your name and why you feel you're a good candidate for this court. Thank you, Ms. Wheeler. I'm honored. I'm James Lombardino. I'm honored to be the judge of your 308th Family District Court. I have a BBA in finance from the University of Houston. I have a JD from the South Texas College of Law. After law school, I was with the district attorney's office as assistant district attorney in Harris County, Texas. And thereafter, I was with a large law firm, downtown law firm, uh, Sacramento and Clay, who did uh, civil litigation. And for the last 15 years, I've done uh, family uh, cases. And I, in my experience, I've got at least 30 trials. I've litigated hundreds of cases. I have children. I have grandchildren. And all these things, I think, give me the opportunity to help people that come into my court 
because I know the experience that needs uh, that we have that, that would help these folks. Thank you so much. And now this question. Domestic violence is currently very much in the news. Uh, if reelected, how would you handle such cases in your court and what tools do you have available to protect the injured party? Well, the primary uh, focus is protective orders, which is out of the 280th uh, district court. And those protective orders, once they're in place, protects the victim because no one can come around, I mean, the uh, offender cannot come around the victim or the children or their work. And if they do, then they can be arrested. They cannot carry a firearm. This is very important. We also have injunctive relief where there can be injunctions against folks being around the children or the parents. We have also called uh, Battering Intervention Preventive Program, it's called BIP. And that's an intensive program where you go you're ordered to go to this program to deal with any of your anger issues. And another thing that we do is we have frequent uh, drug and alcohol testing. Sometimes this dr a drug and alcohol testing is done at random, and I find that a lot of times this is caused by drugs or alcohol. So we need to make sure that they're off drugs or alcohol before they're around the children. Thank you, sir. And please state a policy or procedure that you have are planned to introduce into your court if reelected that you feel has or will result in greater effectiveness and or efficiency in your court? Well, one of the things that we've implemented in our court is all our staff is bilingual. But however, in addition to being bilingual, we re look at the, at the folks and we want to make this court, the 308th, an affordable court. So when it comes to uh, appointments like ad litems, we let the parties agree who is going to be the enlightened because they sometimes they best know who they need they also know what different folks charge and when i got into the court the amicus attorneys were charging three hundred dollars an hour we have people that would do it fifty dollars an hour a hundred dollars an hour also on mediations they were charging six hundred dollars each side for mediations in our court if you're appointed the maximum charge is three hundred dollars but we also have folks they will do it for $50 or $100. And then, of course, the county has a, a program where it can be done for free. So the main thing, I think, make it affordable so when these people go to court, they come back and they have something left in their pocket. What procedure, rule, or regulation do you have to determine the appointment of an attorney to represent children in litigation? Again, first thing we do is if, if it's a private case, we look for an agreement of the parties. If the attorneys know somebody that they think would be appropriate in this case, then we would appoint that person. If not, we look at other factors. How are they proper for this case? We look at the cultural issues. We look at the language issues. You know, if somebody is going to be Hispanic or they're not going to be Middle East, we want to get folks in there that can deal with those type of things because those things are important. And sometimes even just a, a language problem will be a problem in trying to get a case settled. Um, the ability of the attorneys. How can they represent children? Do they look out for the best interest of the children or are they just going through the motions? It's very important that these attorneys look at, to see what is in the best interest of the children before them and that they represent the children in a strong manner. Thank you, Judge, for coming in today. Thank you so Thank much. You. And now we'd like to recognize the, uh, his opponent, candidate Jim Evans, for the 308th Family Great. District Court. Great. Would you please um, again state your name and why you feel you're a good candidate for this court, sir? Sure. My name is Jim Evans. I'm running for the 308th Family Court. I'm a good candidate for this court because I understand the people of Harris County. I understand families and children, and I understand the law. I'm from here. I was born in Bayshore Hospital. I'm from here. My dad worked on the ship channel all his life, all his uh, career. My mom worked at First Baptist Pasadena, and my first job was the summer day camp director there. I spent my entire adult life working for the good of families and children. I was a Southern Baptist minister. I was a uh, public school teacher before I was an attorney. As an attorney, before I was a family lawyer, I was a bankruptcy lawyer. I understand the pressures that families have. I understand in the real life, what it's like to be in front of the judge as well. I'm a divorced dad. I'm an adoptive dad. When folks are in front of the judge, they need someone who understands what's going on with those folks' lives. 
I'm a graduate of the University of Houston Law Center. I graduated with honors from there. I practice family law exclusively in Harris County right now. My office is downtown, and I'm happy to be here with y'all. Thank you, sir. And domestic violence is currently very much in the news. If elected, how would you handle such cases in your court, and what tools do you have available to protect the injured party? Sure. And all of the candidates and judges have mentioned that we have a specialized domestic violence court in Harris County, which is unusual. The 280th court and those judges are here with us tonight. The system that we have allows people to get a protective order or ask for a protective order from that court. If that is granted, there are some consequences that a family judge is going to have to follow, and that has been laid out very carefully by the Texas legislature. If I'm elected, I'm going to follow the law as laid out by the Texas legislature. I'm also interested in the best interests of children and in fairness for the parties. These are the ultimate concerns. Someone who is going to look and make sure that children are protected, the victim is protected, and that the person who has perpetrated the violence is able to get as much help as possible. And that's what, if I'm elected, I'll be doing in the 308. Thank you. Now, would you please state a policy or procedure that you plan to introduce into your court, if elected, that you feel will result in greater effectiveness or efficiency in your court? Sure. Right now, the docket call, as we call it, in all of the family courts is kind of a cattle call. And it's not the fault of anybody, it's just the way that it is. And at 9 o'clock in the morning in all of the family courts, sometimes dozens and up to 100 cases are called. And what I want to do is a couple of times a month have a docket that is available for people to sign up on, and you have to tell us in advance how much time you want, five minutes, 10 minutes, or 15 minutes. And you can have your, your case heard, and you don't have to show up at 9 o'clock, you can show up at 2.10, but if you sign up for five minutes at 2.10, you get five minutes of the court's time. And what this is going to do, it's going to allow people who work an odd schedule to get their case or their, their matter heard at a time which doesn't require them to be at court at 9 o'clock. It will also help people get into the court. Sometimes it's very difficult because everyone is showing up at the same time. I think that that will improve the efficiency of the 308 if I'm elected and the other courts as well. Thank you, Mr. Evans. What procedure, rule, or regulation will you have to determine the appointment of an attorney to represent children in litigation? The judge in the 308, like the judges in all of the family courts, has the opportunity to appoint people to dozens and hundreds of cases each year. That person's job is either to represent the children in the court or to represent to the or to let the court know what is going on in those children's lives. I'm an educator at heart. I have a master's degree in education. I intend to ask people before they are appointed in my court to meet with me. I'm going to want to know what is it that they are good at, what's their experience in education regarding children and family systems. And I want to appoint the right person to represent each child in each case. I'm not going to have a list and just strictly go down it. When the people are appointed, I don't want them to try to predict what I'm going to say and simply use their position to be a predictor of the judge's ruling. I don't want them to simply make their decision based on some arbitrary decision. I'm going to ask people to keep themselves educated, attend legal uh, continuing education events that will help make them people that can work for the best interests of children. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Thanks. And moving along, we'd like to recognize uh, the 309th Family District Court, Judge Sherry Y. Dean. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, would you please state your name and why you feel you're a good candidate for this court? Yes, my name is Judge Sherry Wadeen, and I am the presiding judge of this court and have been for the last four years. I believe that I'm qualified for many reasons. I am a graduate of the University of Texas with a business administration degree, which I use every day in my court to make sure that the business of the court is taken care of in a timely manner. I also have a degree from South Texas College of Law since 1991. I've been practicing in family law since 1992. So for 18 years before I took the bench, my main area of practice was family law. I have been endorsed by many of the people that are uh, part of the bar. The Pasadena <coughs> Bar Association, the uh, Mexican American Bar Association, Police Inc. also, also, the Professional Firefighters Union, and several others. I'm going to invite you to go to my website at www.deanfamilylaw.com. 
for judge.com to see the others. Thank you. Judge Dean, domestic violence is currently very much in the news. If reelected, how would you handle such cases in your court and what tools do you have available to protect the injured party? Well, fortunately, <clears throat> as a district judge, uh, there are many tools available uh, to me as a family judge, which again, I use every day. While we have a protective order court, uh, we still hear evidence on the violence that occurs uh, daily in all of these uh, cases, or many of them. So there are many things that we can do. I can restrict possession and access. I can make it uh, possession and access or the pickup and delivery at a neutral place to keep fighting down at the uh, parents' houses. Um, we impose injunctions, which can include no contact by the person who has committed domestic violence against another. We can require them to take all kinds of different classes and so forth, and also require them to return to my court for status conferences to see how they're doing and if they're following the court's order. Thank you. Would you please state a procedure or policy that you presently have or plan to introduce into your court if reelected that you feel has or will result in greater effectiveness or efficiency in your court? Well, one of the policies that the 309th has is that we are a full-time court. That means we show up and hear cases one right after the other as quickly as possible, but with the uh, eye towards making sure that justice is served in my court. The other thing <clears throat> that I do is I have pretrial conferences on Fridays. That's where the attorneys have to come and present me with information to show they have exchanged their exhibits, that they're ready for trial. And <clears throat> this then takes care of delay uh, in hearing these cases later on if these exhibits have already been exchanged and so forth. I also think, am a firm believer in mediation. Um, I think that people should try and solve uh, their cases without litigation if they can, and it is required by the local rules. There are many other things that we do, but we want to emphasize a policy of making sure that people have their time in court. Thank you. And last of all, what procedure, rule, or regulation do you have to determine the appointment of an attorney to represent children in litigation? I require, um, first and foremost, that the attorney who is asking for appointment in my court come by and have a personal conversation with myself or my associate judge. This is very important <clears throat> so that we can actually face-to-face, -face, look at these people, measure their sincerity about wanting to do this work. Uh, they must be uh, certified. They've got a class that they have got to take and bring the certification to us. And then, once these folks are appointed on these cases, we monitor them, of course, and make sure that they are exercising the due diligence that they are required to do by statute. We do not appoint new and, and inexperienced uh, attorneys uh, to termination cases without first showing us on some of the more minor things that they can indeed uh, do the work. Thank you, Judge Dean. And now we'd like to re recognize candidate Kathleen Vossler for the 309th Family District Court. Welcome. Thank Please you. state your name and why you feel that you are a good candidate for this court. Thank you. My name is Kathy Vossler. I'm a lifelong Houstonian. Went to school at the University of Houston, earned my undergraduate degree as a single mom of three children. Went on to University of Houston Law School, earned my uh, law degree as a single parent of three children. Gained honors in both. I was licensed on November 7th, on 1997, on the day that I got licensed and sworn in. I opened my own family law practice, and I've been fa practicing family law ever since. I've handled all kinds of family cases, everything from adoptions, terminations, CPS cases, divorce, uh, modifications, child support, enforcement, uh, custody cases, every kind of family case there is. In addition to that, I've worked successfully with lawyers in other areas of law, um, whether it be criminal law, 
immigration law or a guardianship law, probate law, and uh, bankruptcy law, and, and, and the successful completion of cases. Thank you. Well, we know that domestic violence um, is very much in the news. If elected, how would you handle such cases in your court, and what tools do you have available to protect the injured party? One of the tools that I have is my experience. I have handled family uh, domestic violence cases in conjunction with my family law practice uh, for my entire career. I've represented the victims of domestic violence and the perpetrators of domestic violence, the children of domestic violence, and people that are wrongfully accused of domestic violence. As a matter of fact, four years ago I ran for that court. I, um, there are a number of tools that are available. Among those, some of them have been mentioned already today, but among those are the, the ability to uh, monitor the uh, exchange of the children in a safe place at a police station or at a public place, to um, order educational classes for the parties so that they can go and learn about domestic violence and stop the pattern, to protect the children, to make sure that the uh, limit the perpetrator's access to, their, to them at where they're most vulnerable at their school, and um, also to protect the victims and, and uh, according to the law. Thank you. Now, would you please state a procedure or policy that you plan to introduce into your court if elected that you feel has or, or will result in greater effectiveness and efficiency in your court? Yes. One of the things that I want to do, as you, as you all know in Pasadena and Deer Park area, it's when, when court starts at, at 9 o'clock in the morning, it's not always available for people to go uh, to court because the, the shift work, We've got police officers, nurses, um, all the ship channel workers. They work different shifts and different hours. The courts are available from 8 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon, and my court will be available during those hours. It's often that people will come to court at 8 o'clock in the morning for a, an uncontested matter to do a prove up, to do an agreement, um, and, but the courts is not available at other times. My court will be available to those people that need to use it at different hours of the day that are more, con more convenient for their work schedule or their school schedule or their daycare schedule so that they don't have to lose time um, away from those things and they can get their business taken care of. And lastly, what procedure, rule, or regulation will you have to determine the, appoint the appointment of an attorney to represent children in litigation? I will, I will appoint attorneys that are qualified I will appoint attorneys that are doing their job. I will appoint attorneys that, are, that have evidenced a uh, strong um, capacity to do the job that they're appointed to do and that are doing it honestly and thoroughly. I won't appoint attorneys that are donating to a campaign and I won't uh, prejudice anyone that's donated to someone else's campaign. I will appoint attorneys that are doing, uh, that have the reputation and do the job and I'll follow up on that reputation. Sometimes what happens, we have attorneys that get appointed to a bunch of cases and they get appointed so often that they can't handle it all. I'll make sure and monitor that, keep an eye on it. When parties do agree to an attorney of, the, of their own selection, I will honor that and respect their wishes. When they um, can't agree, then I will appoint someone that's qualified given the particulars of their case, the nature of their case, the experience that would be uh, required in order to do a good job representing the children in that particular case. Thank you for coming in today. We appreciate that. Thank you all. And lastly, uh, this evening for the Family District Courts, we would like to go to the 280th District Court and recognize Judge Lynn Bradshaw Hull. Good evening. Good evening. Would you state your name and why you feel you are a good candidate in this court? My name is Lynn Bradshaw Hull. I am the first elected judge to the 280th Domestic Violence Court, and I'm seeking re-election. I offer my 30 years at bar, including 10 years of practicing family law, with nearly 20 years of service as a judge in Harris County. 
I have presided fairly <coughs> over the disposition of more than 65,000 cases, including 500 jury trials and 5,000 applications for protective order. I am recognized by the College of Judicial Studies as a distinguished alumni, an honor only carried by six Texas judges. I have been honored twice for judicial leadership by the presidential commendation of the State Bar. I, have, I am a native Texan. I'm married 35 years. We have two grown married children. I have uh, three wonderful grandchildren. And I invite you to my website, www.judgebradshawhull.net. Once again, I ask you for your vote. Domestic violence is currently very much in the news. If reelected, how would you handle such cases in your court and what tools do you have available to protect the injured party? If you believe like I do that domestic violence is a cycle and is learned behavior, then you also believe that people can choose to unlearn that behavior. No one is immune from domestic violence and no one is immune from being accused of domestic violence. The best tool I have is the Battering Intervention Prevention Counseling Program accredited through the state of Texas. When I first came to the court, there was only one accredited program. Now there are 25. I order this counseling program to begin before any agreement or, or orders resume for access or visitation to children they share. I also order and hold compliance hearings throughout the order for counseling attendance and other issues related to the protective order. Protected parties may choose to appear at this order or request a hearing for modification to assure that any protective order remains protective. Safety and accountability is my priority. Please state a procedure or policy that you plan to introduce into your court if elected that you feel will result in greater effectiveness or efficiency in your court. I must use all tools in the law that is there for protection. There are protective orders that may come from criminal courts or their magistrates. This civil protective order I must sign usually is in place for two years. Any violation may and usually is in Harris County criminally prosecuted. I must set hearings within 14 days of any application being filed. I must issue temporary protective orders when lawful and when there are no others. I am to issue protective orders immediately after these hearings and effect delivery on both parties. I must oversee the duties of my court clerk in delivering the signed protective orders to the various law enforcement agencies, the schools, the daycares, the division of DPS that monitors concealed handguns. What procedure, rule, or regulation do you have in place to determine the appointment of an attorney to represent children in litigation? The legislature in creating this domestic violence court did not provide for the appointment of an attorney to represent children in this litigation. No judge should impose any procedure, rule, regulation contrary to the mandate of the legislature or which could in fact create delay in these time sensitive proceedings. A U.S. Supreme Court justice once said, a timid judge like a biased judge is intrinsically a lawless judge. Administering this court as a seasoned judge is challenging. I enjoy the reputation of being a fine jurist. I have consistently been recognized in the bar polls and in fact was the winner of the judicial qualifications poll of the Houston Bar Association. I pledge to you once again that I will honor the legislature's mandate to promote an informed, consistent response to cases involving domestic violence in an effort to lessen misdemeanors, felonies, and God forbid fatalities the result of domestic violence. Thank you. And now we would like to recognize candidate Barbara J. Stalder, who's running for the 280th Family District Court. Good afternoon. Would you please state your name and why you feel that you are a good candidate for this court? Yes, and thank you very much for inviting me. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you and all of the citizens of Pasadena. My name is Barbara Stalder. I am running for the 280th Judicial District Court. And the main reason I'm running is because people's lives are at stake. And I believe with my experience over 20 years working with victims of domestic violence, 
um, and 12 years of, of that as a lawyer, that I have the right experience, the right education, and the right background to make Harris County's Domestic Violence Court a model protective order court. We are the only protective order court in this state. And I believe through my background in working at Lone Star Legal Aid with poverty-stricken individuals, in working at Aid to Victims of Domestic Abuse, and now teaching at the University of Houston Law Center in their civil clinic and teaching family law and domestic violence, that I have the right experience to be able to uh, work with the citizens of Harris County in this court. Okay. Domestic violence is very much in the news. If elected, how would you handle these cases and what tools do you have available to protect the injured party? Yes, thank you. Unfortunately, domestic violence uh, is in the news. Um, I'm also grateful that it's in the news because I think what it does is it brings awareness to this issue that's long been uh, swept under the rug. Um, I believe that um, there are several tools that are available to a judge of this court. First and foremost, we have various uh, women's centers around the city, the Houston Area Women's Center, the Bridge Over Tro Troubled Waters here in Pas uh, Pasadena. We also have humble family time. We have those tools to be able to reach out, to develop relationships, to develop partnerships, and be able to pull together those resources to try to find a way to educate our young people, to educate our children, and to educate both men and women on what is appropriate behavior. And I believe that those tools is what is going to stop this cycle of violence. Thank you. Would you please state a policy or procedure that you plan to introduce in your court, if elected, that you feel will result in greater effectiveness and efficiency in this court? Thank you. Yes, I think technology uh, in some ways is a double-edged sword. Sometimes it's great when it works and it's not so great when it doesn't work. However, one of the tools that, that the protective order court can have at its disposal is technology. We can uh, use court call, which is a, uh, a special conferencing service that is free to the judges. The litigants do pay a small fee, but we also have Skype and FaceTime available. Most everybody we know has a smartphone, a tablet, a desktop computer, a laptop, and we can help uh, make those resources um, available to them through some of the other entities in, in uh, Harris County. And I think by utilizing technology, we can keep victims safer. We can have attorneys who are in other counties be able to call in and use those services without having to drive a mile uh, or, excuse me, an hour, uh, being an hour away. And I think technology uh, would, serve, would serve a great purpose. And last of all, what procedure, rule, or regulation will you have to determine the appointment of an attorney to represent children in litigation? Uh, Judge Bradshaw Hall is correct that the legislature didn't put, uh, specifically uh, allow for the appointment of a attorney ad litem or an amicus attorney, which is sort of like a guardian ad litem and an attorney that uh, works in custody cases. However, the legislature didn't specifically prohibit that. The judge does have it at his or her disposal a discretionary appointment process. And I believe that as the judge of the 280th District Court, there may be some times when I may want to utilize that. And if I do, I will choose experienced lawyers who understand the dynamics of domestic violence, who understand that time is of the essence. In addition, we have two very great law schools that have programs involving domestic violence. We have South Texas College of Law and U of H Law Center. And those services are for free, and those folks do a great job, and I would definitely utilize those services. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. That concludes uh, the candidates for the Family District Court. We'd like to thank our participants who gave of their time today to score these candidates. We appreciate that. Thank you very much, and thanks to the citizens of Pasadena.